Hello and welcome to another accounting tutorial. Within this session, we'll be running through allocation, apportionment and reapportionment. So by the end of this video, you should understand the process and be able to complete questions on the aforementioned topics. Allocation and apportionment forms part of absorption costing. What we're trying to achieve by completing this process is to move overhead costs out of the supporting departments and into the production departments. By doing this, all the business's costs will then sit within the production departments and from there can be absorbed into the individual products in order to determine the true cost of producing one unit. For now, we're going to table reapportionment and come back to that later on. Now let's look more in depth at the process of allocation and apportionment. If a cost of the business relates solely to one area or department, then this is where allocation would take place. As we know that the cost relates wholly to one area, we can simply allocate the full cost to that particular department. This should be relatively straightforward. Now, what's a little more thought provoking is if we have a cost to the business that relates to more than one department. A typical example of where this would happen would be rent. For most businesses, the building that they rent will cover more than one department, which means we can't just simply allocate that cost to one area of the business. This is where apportionment comes in, because what we do is split the cost between the relevant departments that it relates to. To be able to do this, we need what's referred to as a basis of apportionment. This gives an appropriate and fair method in which to split the overheads over the various departments. Going back to rent, for example, the most common way a business would split the rental cost would be to use a basis of apportionment of floor space. This is something that can be easily measured between the departments. The process for a business then would be to take each overhead that isn't allocated straight to a department and find the most appropriate basis of apportionment for that particular overhead. The next stage would be to take the overhead cost and divide it by the total value of the basis of apportionment. We would then multiply this figure by the individual department's proportion. Now, that may sound confusing, but let's put this into an example where it will seem much clearer. So here we have our example. So what we have here in the top left is all our expenses. And the idea behind doing this first section, which is the allocation and apportionment, is to split these different expenses across our different centers, which are just along our table headers here. So we have creation, finishing, maintenance, stores, and general. So there are different departments. And just to reiterate, the idea behind doing this will be to split these different overheads here, or these different costs, amongst these different departments. And to be able to do that, we need what's called a basis of apportionment. And what we will do is select from this column, or within this column here, the most appropriate basis of apportionment. And all that is, is the best way or most appropriate way in which to split our overhead figures. So what you can see is that we have just taken each of our overheads and moved them into the left hand side of the table. And what we'll do first is select the most appropriate basis of apportionment for each one. So for the depreciation of plant and machinery, which is this first expense up here, the best way to apportion that would be on the carrying amount of plant and machinery. So what you'll find is once you've done one or two examples, they'll pretty much always be the same. So for depreciation, we want to apportion based on the carrying amount of the plant and machinery. Next, we have power for production machinery. Well, this would make most sense to split this based on power usage. So we select that from the table, which is your kilowatt per hour. 
The next would be rent and rates. And the most appropriate method for this would be floor space. So we'll just select floor space. Light and heat would follow a very similar pattern to rent and rates. So that would be floor space again. And then indirect labor, we can see that it has been directly split between maintenance, stores, and general admin, which are the three categories up here. So this one would just be allocated. The process for this is relatively straightforward. What we will do is we will take our expense, and now we've selected our basis of apportionment, we now need to split this amount using the relevant basis of apportionment. So I'll show you how to do the calculation for each one. So what we do is we take our £382,900 and we would divide it by the carrying amount of the total plant and equipment. So I can type that in here so you can see. So it would be the expense divided by the total amount and then what we need to do from that point onwards is multiply it by the relevant proportion for that particular department. So in this example, we're working on creation. So we divide by the total and then multiply by the carrying amount of plant and machinery for creation. And we can enter that in. And what we'll do is we'll just round all these to whole numbers. And then the next one for finishing, again, we need to follow the exact same process. So we take the 382,900, divide it by the total of the carrying amount, and multiply it for the carrying amount of plant and machinery for the finishing department. Excellent. And you can see within the totals, that should now come back to your original expense figure. So by doing that, we've successfully split the depreciation of plant and machinery and apportioned it appropriately to the two different production centers. The next on the list then is power for production machinery. And we will follow the exact same process. So we take the expense for power for production machinery the base of apportionment for this one is kilowatt per hour. So we divide it by the total kilowatt per hour and multiply it by the relevant department. And we'll do the same for finishing. Uh, divide by the total kilowatt per hour and multiply it by the amount on finishing. And again, you can see within the totals that this should add back up to the expense. The next one on the list is rent and rates. So this is actually going to be split over five different departments, but the process is identical. So all we would do is take our rent and rates, divide it by the total floor space, and then we'll just multiply this for each particular department. So now that's done, you can see again that the total adds back up to the expense. And we'll now do the exact same process for heat and light. Excellent. So again, you see that the light and heat adds back up to the expense. Now for the indirect labor costs, as I said before, you can just allocate these to the relevant departments. And there we go. All I would do is also, I would just total the bottoms as well. And there we go. 
If we want to double check to make sure that we've got this 100% correct, if we just have a look at the full list of expenses, it should come back, which it does, to £961,967. So we know that we've got it correct. The next step is reapportionment, and we're going to be using the direct method. This means that we're going to take the costs that we've allocated and apportioned to the service centres and move them across to the production centres. To do this, we need to know how much time or resource each service centre provides to each production centre. Let's jump back to our example and continue with reapportionment. So the next part, as I've just mentioned, is reapportioning the overheads. So all I've done is taken the figures as we had from the previous table and put them into a new table, which will allow us to move all these overheads from the service department into the production departments. So let's have a look at what information we have available. Overheads are allocated or apportioned on the most appropriate basis. The total overheads of the support cost centers are then reapportioned to the two production centers using the direct method. 75% of maintenance cost centers time is spent maintaining production machinery in the creation production center and the remainder in the finishing production center. So what we're saying is that maintenance, this department, spends 75% on creation and 25% on finishing. So what we do is we would take our maintenance figure and 75% of it would go to creation and 25 would go to finishing. That would then leave zero within the maintenance department. So let's get that done. So if we just put 75% in here. Again, we'll just make these figures all numbers. And 25% going to finish in. And then within this box here, so directly under maintenance, what we want to do is show this as a minus. And all that does is show that we've taken the amounts out of maintenance and split it between creation and finishing. So these should always add back up to this figure here. If you've not, then you've done something wrong. Next one then is stores. So it says the stores cost center makes 40% of its issues to the creation production center and 60% to the finishing. So all we do again, we take this total and we split it so that 40% would go to creation and 60% to finishing. You should see at this point that it is a relatively simple process. Again, we want to show this as a minus to show that it's been now moved. And then the last one, so the general admin, it says supports the two production centers equally. So it would just be 50% to both. And again, you just want to make sure you've taken this out. Again, just check as you go along, make sure that everything adds up. So then the final step is just to total your two production center columns. So we can do that now. And then they should add up. So when we add the two together, it should come back to your original total figure because we've not lost any value. We've just moved it from the support centers into the production centers. So these two figures should always match up. And usually if you've done that, you most of the time will have got it right. I'm not saying if you did something wrong up in the top section when you were doing your allocation apportionment, technically it could still be wrong. But as long as that's all correct, as long as then these match up, it's usually the case that you've got it right. And that wraps up this video on allocation and apportionment and reapportionment. 
please don't forget to like this video if you found it helpful and to subscribe for more AAT content. Thanks again for watching. I'll catch you in the next video.